Hi everyone. So we will be doing a sample problem today on the method of undetermined coefficients for linear systems. Taking this one from the textbook, this is 4.8.3. We are asked to consider an initial value problem, y prime equals the matrix 2, 1, 1, 2, y plus the vector e to the minus t, 0. So you can see that one here with the initial condition that y of 0 is equal to 0, 0. So we are asked first for part A to form the complementary solution. So to find the complementary solution, we need to solve the eigenvalue problem. We're going to be ignoring the non-homogeneous part, the extra vector that's added on there. And we just have to figure out the eigenvalues and then their corresponding eigenvectors, and we'll be able to put together the complementary solution. So what are the eigenvalues? Well, we're going to have to set 0 equals to the determinant of our matrix with uh, minus lambda put down the diagonal. So it's the determinant of 2 minus lambda, 1, 1, 2 minus lambda. That's equal to 2 minus lambda squared minus 1, which uh, multiplying that out, let's see, we'll have 4 minus 4 lambda plus lambda squared minus 1, or lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 3, and finally we can factor that to get lambda minus 3 and lambda minus 1. So our eigenvalues are 1 and 3. Now to go with each of those eigenvalues, we're going to need to figure out an eigenvector. So let's go straight away figuring that part out. So for the eigenvalue lambda equals 1, 1, we will have, so remember that what we need to solve here is a minus lambda i times some vector is equal to the 0 vector. So a minus lambda i in the case of lambda equals 1 will be the thing that we get when we plug in, when we plug in lambda equals 1 here and here. Or if we think about it from the original equation, it's taking one, to subtracting one from each of the diagonal elements of the original matrix A that we had. So doing that here, we're going to get uh, the matrix 1, 1, 1, 1 times V1, V2 equals 0, 0. And I think we've had enough practice at this point that we can see pretty immediately that we could choose a vector of 1, negative 1 as our eigenvector. Of course, any multiple of that would also be an eigenvector. For the eigenvalue lambda equals 3, we get the matrix. So now it's 2 minus 3, so minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1 times v1, v2 is equal to 0, 0. And here we get an eigenvector of 1, 1 would work. Uh, from that, we can put together the complementary solution. So the complementary solution will be yc is equal to a constant times e to the 1t, so e to the t, times its corresponding eigenvector, 1 minus 1, plus c2 times e to the 3t, this is lambda equals 3, times its corresponding eigenvector, 1, 1. Okay, so we've got ourselves a complementary solution. We're well on our way to solving the entire problem. The next step will be to take care of the particular solution. So with the method of undetermined coefficients, we have to start with a guess. We are told in this problem that our initial guess should have the form. The particular solution should be e to the minus at, or sorry, e to the minus t, times a. So a constant vector a times e to the minus t. All right, so recall that our differential equation is, oops, let's undo that. So our differential equation is y prime equals 2, 1, 1, 2 times y plus e to the minus t Oh, and 0, so that could be rewritten as 1, 
0 times e to the minus t. And that gives us a hint why our undetermined coefficients attempt would be e to the minus t times some constant vector, because that's the non-homogeneity that we have. All right, so to plug this in, on the left-hand side, we're going to want to put in uh, y prime. So y prime, or yp prime, will be equal to minus e to the minus a t times a. So that's what we get on the left-hand side, minus e to the minus t a. And on the right-hand side, we will get 2, 1, 1, 2 times a times e to the minus t plus 0 or 1, 0 times e to the minus t. And now we can eliminate all of the e to the minus t's and we get ourselves a vector equation. Uh, so we will have minus a equals, well, sorry, let's, uh, let's try and rewrite this in a slightly more convenient way for the next step. So we're going to rewrite a as a1, a2. And it's a two vector. So we're going to need it in that form in just a second. Here we have a1, a2, plus 1, 0. All right, so what are we going to do from here? Well, we need to get this equation to have only the a1s and a2s. You know, so we need to have some you know, workable equations here. So what we can do is just multiply out the matrix on the right-hand side. So let's see where that gets us to. We get minus a1, a2 equals, let's see, this will be 2a1 plus a2 and a1 plus 2a2 uh, plus 1, 0. Okay, and then we'll bring this over to the same time to get all the a's on the same side, get the not a's on the other side. So minus 1, 0 equals 2a1 plus a2, a1 plus 2a2 plus a1, a2. And that leads us to, uh, well, let's keep going down the column here. So that leads us to what? We get minus 1, 0 equals, so adding across the rows here, we will get 3a1 plus a2 and a1 plus 3a2. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can solve this now. And I'm going to go through both of them just to make sure that we've got it, that we've got it down. So one way to solve this system of equations that we now have is to, to write them out and to just do some substitution. So that would look like looking at these equations. So we have 3a1 plus a2 equals negative 1. And a1 plus 3a2 equals 0. Just looking at the first and second row of the vector equations we have there. From this second equation, we get a1 equals negative 3a2. So we can substitute that into the first equation to give us uh, 3 times negative 3a2 plus a2 equals 1. So that comes to negative 9 plus 1 is minus 8. a2 equals 1. So a2 equals minus 1 over 8. And since a1 is equal to negative 3 times that, we get that a1 is equal to 3 eighths. And that works perfectly well. That will give us our particular solution. An alternate way to do this is to take our equation here, or, or this vector, and rewrite it in matrix form. So if we do that, so one method is to do what we just did. Another method would be to bring that over here and say, oh, well, actually what we have is 3, 1, 1, 3 times a1, a2 is equal to negative 1, 0. 
So then to find A1 and A2, all we have to do is multiply by the matrix inverse. So A1, A2 will be equal to 3, 1, 1, 3 inverse times 1, 0. To get the inverse of this matrix, we need to do, so we do 1 over the determinant. The determinant is 9 minus 1 is 8, so 1 over 8. And we will switch the first and fourth entries of the matrix, and they're the same, so that doesn't make any difference at all. We get 3 and 3, and we put minus signs on the other entries, and that's still multiplied by 1, 0. So now multiplying this out, we get 1 eighth times, uh, so multiplying the first row times the column, we get 3, and multiplying the second row times the column, we get minus 1, so this becomes 3 eighths, negative 1 eighth, and that's exactly the same A1 and A2 that we got from the other method. You can choose either one of those, whatever you're most comfortable with. Certainly, it's useful to know about the matrix method, but for two equations, this, the substitution method works just as well. Uh, so finally, we put those together, and we have our particular solution. Our particular solution must be equal to, uh, recalling that it was e to the minus t times a. It should be e to the minus t times 3 eighths negative 1 eighth. So we have ourselves a particular solution and a complementary solution. With those, we can figure out finally a solution for the initial value problem because we add those together to get ourselves the general solution. And the general solution would be y of t equals c1. Uh, well, let's say, let's take it one step at a time. It will be the complementary solution plus the particular solution. And in this case, that will be one, C1, uh, e to the t. Uh, Got to remember what I wrote down. C1, e to the t. And the eigenvector with that was 1, negative 1, plus C2, e to the 3t, 1, 1, plus e to the minus t. And then we have... Uh, 3 eighths minus 1 eighth. That's our general solution. Uh, to apply the initial condition, the initial condition that we're given is that y of 0 equals 0, 0. So plugging in 0 for t, we get c1 times 1, negative 1, plus c2 times 1, 1 plus 3 eighths, 1 eighth equals the zero vector or zero, zero. Okay, so now let's combine these together into a single uh, vector equation. I'm gonna move the constants over to the other side. So I get C1 plus C2 on the first row and minus C1 plus C2 as my second row by adding those first two things together, and that's going to be equal to negative 3 eighths, negative 1, oh, left out a minus sign there, and so that's going to be plus 1 eighth in the bottom. Okay, again, we have two ways that we can solve this system of equations. We can do it either by substitution or by the matrix method. I'm going to go through both. So for substitution, we have C1 plus C2 equals negative 3 eighths. C, negative C1 plus C2 equals 1 eighth. Taking that second equation, I can say that C2 is equal to 1 eighth plus C1. Plug that into the first equation to give C1 plus 1 eighth plus C1 equals negative 3 eighths. So 2c1 equals negative 4 eighths, or 1 half. And finally, c1 is equal to negative 1 fourth. And c2 is equal to 
one eighth plus c1. So one eighth plus negative one fourth is negative one eighth. All right, so we have our c1 and c2, and from that we could form the, the solution to the initial value problem. Uh, alternate method would be to use the matrix approach. The matrix approach says, oh, well, it's C1 plus C2 and negative C1 plus C2, that's 1, 1, negative 1, 1, times C1, C2 equals, and I'll pull out the 1 eighth here just to keep it simple, minus 3, 1 times 1 eighth. So using the matrix inverse, C1, C2 is equal to 1, 1, negative 1, 1, inverse times negative 3, 1, times 1 eighth. So we just have to figure out what this matrix inverse is and multiply it out. So we get the determinant is 1 plus 1 is 2, so 1 half. We reverse A and D, they're the same, so that's fine. We have a 1 and a 1 there, and these get, and the off diagonal ones get the opposite sign, so negative 1 and 1 times negative 3, oops, not a fraction, a vector, negative 3, 1, and then times 1 eighth. All right, so following that through, the 1 eighth and the 1 half can combine to become 1 16th, and the vector and matrix multiplication gets us 1 times negative 3, negative 1 times 1 is negative 4, and 1, one so negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and multiplying that together gives us uh, negative 1 fourth and negative 1 eighth. And if we compare, those are the same C1 and C2 values that we got from the other method. Right? We see those here, there's the negative 1 eighth, negative 1 eighth, C1 is negative 1 fourth, and negative 1 fourth. So last but not least, we can put this all together into the solution of the initial value problem. We get that y of t is equal to negative 1 fourth e to the t 1 minus 1 minus 1 eighth e to the 3 t uh, 1 1 plus, and what was our complementary solution here, e to the, let's get it in the same format, so e to the minus t, 3 eighths, negative 1 eighth. And altogether, that's the solution. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. You can, you can write by email or contact me through the Canvas page. We can uh, go over this again or go, you know, clarify any questions that you might have. I'll also be posting the PDF version of these notes once the video goes live. All right, thanks everyone.